Welcome back guys. So Hackchi has been recently updated to support full UI integration for the Sega Genesis Mini. So in this video, simply we're gonna go through the process of using Hackchi to add some games to the Genesis Mini. So follow along. Now we did previously do a video on Project Lunar, which is another hack to enable you to add games to your system. And there is a lot of features with that. I think it's gonna be kind of up to the person, which do you prefer? With Hackchi, I think people who just wanna simply add some Sega Genesis games, this may be the preferred way. It's very simple. A lot of us are familiar with Hackchi. Uh, you know, those of us who have hacked the NES and Super Nintendo Classic, but Project Lunar is very simple as well. I have a card up top if you wanna take a look at my Project Lunar video, but let's go ahead and take a look at this. Link will be in the description for the download of Hackchi to CE 3.7.0. This is the latest version as of the recording of this video. Tons of features listed, a lot of information. If you want to go through that, um, take a look. I'm not going to read all this stuff off. We're simply going to go through the process. So you got a bunch of special thanks here to these guys for testing this out, working on it. Really do appreciate everybody involved in these hacks, really opening up these systems. But to download, we're going to go down here. Um, so I've already downloaded this, the uh, CE 3.7.0 release.zip. Okay, so once we have that downloaded, let's go ahead and unzip it, um, use whatever program I'm using, 7-zip. Do that, it takes one second. Boom, we've got our folder there. Open that up, and then we're gonna navigate to the hackchi.exe, the executable. So let's open that. Restoring original games, okay. Hello there, very glad you're using Hackchi too. Gives you some information, but we're not too worried about that. Reminder, if you're modding a Sega Mini, the included USB cable will not work. So there is that. You need to make sure you have that data enabled cable. Now, if you've just freshly installed this, it's gonna to default to NES. Let's go ahead and go to Sega Genesis. Whichever region you're in, I'm using the Sega Genesis uh, US version right here. Now, the first step that we're gonna do is go ahead and click on kernel. So we're gonna hit install and repair. Do you want to flash the custom kernel? Yes. So it's going to give us some directions here. Unplugged USB cable. We don't have anything plugged in. I have a USB cable plugged into my PC. Turn the power switch on. So we've already got the power switch in the on position. While holding reset, plug the USB cable into the mini. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So it just takes a second. And once it recognizes it, it'll start uploading the kernel, doing all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and give that a moment and then come back to this. Okay, so now that that process is done, you can now upload games to your system. So let's go ahead and start that up. Click OK. Um, so what we could do here, because it has a full list of all the games that are included on the Genesis Mini. We don't want to look at that. We can go to View um, and then just hide them so we don't see them for now. Now, there's a few things we could do. In this video, we're just going to mess around with Sega Genesis games, but a few other options as well. So the one thing we can do um, is add some, some modules. And the one thing you may be interested in doing, and I'm gonna recommend this only for games that the included emulator on the Sega Genesis Mini struggles with, is to install RetroArch. So we have RetroArch right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, download the module. I'm not gonna install it yet because there is something else we need as well. So the course. Now, you could add a bunch of cores to play other games. For me, I'm only interested in Sega Genesis, but in the future, we may do some more content looking at different options with Hackchi, but I'm gonna go ahead and install or download, we'll install in a second, a, another Sega Genesis emulator that will not have a problem with things like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist. As it was pointed out in like, my Project Lunar video and in the, uh, the True Blue Mini, like. Hyperstone Heist just does not play properly. You lose the sound. So we have to use a different emulator for that. So we have Pico Drive, and then we also have Genesis Plus GX. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, download that module. So there is that. Like I said, if you wanna install other things, this is where you're gonna go about doing it, getting all the different emulators, but uh, I'm good with that for now. So, okay. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is um, we can go ahead and install the modules now or wait and do it after we do the games. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add the games first. So we'll come back to that in a moment. 
So here's a list of games I have on my desktop. I have a little pack of Genesis games I'm going to add. Not too many, but here we go. I'm going to go ahead and select all those. It's not adding them to the system yet. There's still a process, a couple things we need to do. So we're just going to add it to the list is essentially what we're doing. Um, then let's get these two. Okay. So we have all those games. We can just click synchronize the games with the mini and they'll get loaded up, but we don't have any artwork right now. So if you click on a game like Samurai Showdown, we, we just have the standard uh, little cartridge looking thing. We don't want that. We want this to look nice. So we're going to go ahead and select everything um, and then go ahead and right click and go to download box art for selected games. So this will take a second um, depending on how many games you have. It's going to Google all the artwork and we're going to go through and, and double check everything to make sure it looks right because sometimes you could get some wonky stuff. It's not going to be perfect. You can have your own box arts and images on your PC in a folder or something and select them that way. But this way is just a little quicker, um, but you still kind of want to go through and double check everything. And since in the Genesis mini uh, on the home screen or in the user interface, if you press, what is it? B, uh, you can see the spines. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to set up the spines on this as well. So let's go through the artwork here. Artwork's looking good. Um, ah, we have the Mega Drive version of that. That's okay. But yeah, the box arts are looking good. So let's go ahead and get the spines for these. Crusader of Senti. Um, it's going to pull up, you know, random things. It might not, like, show immediately what you're looking for. It could fill up a big list of just random games. Um, but we got this one is the one I want to use. And then we can go ahead and select which spine we want uh, to have on here. So I'm going to select the U.S. Red Stripes for this game just because it matches. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go through each game and doing that. So let's do the spine for this. Uh, Mega Drive. We'll do the blue one. That's okay. Uh, that's fine. Like I said, you could go through and um, find your own artwork. I'm just going through what, what's being Googled. Um, I know a couple games that I have on here are going to have an issue, so I'm going to have to double-check some things on that. But that one's okay. Shaq Fu. Why did I put Shaq Fu on here? Let's go ahead and get the spine for that. That's fine. Sonic the Hedgehog 3, I think I... Like, whenever I've looked at this before um, or Googled... The, the logo, it's always hard to find. So um, on this one, I'm going to go ahead and open up my own that I have um, and select the red stripes. So as you see, maybe it'll eventually load something up. But when you Google Sonic 3 uh, for a, a, a PNG logo, uh, you can't find them for whatever reason or you just find weird ones. So, okay, I had to open that up on my own that I had downloaded. I think Splatterhouse 2 is the same. Uh, let's open up the spine. Uh, I'm going to go with the U.S. grid for Splatterhouse 2. It's just bringing up Splatterhouse 3. So let's go ahead and get that. Yeah, that's fine. So we got the spines uh, set for everything. We're, we're good with that. So we're going to be adding all this to our system. So before we synchronize these games to the system, let's go ahead and do a couple things first. So if you remember, we did download RetroArch and the Genesis GX Plus Core. We did that in order to play Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist. So there's a couple things we have to do. Let's go ahead and install those modules. So up top, modules, click install extra modules, and then select the ones you want to install. So we downloaded Genesis Plus GX and RetroArch. Click those, check mark boxes, click OK. This may take a minute, so just you know, chill for a second. We'll let this process go through and then continue on. Okay, so now that that part is done, we can go ahead and do the next step. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let's go ahead and go back to info. Um, this game, it doesn't play well with the built-in emulator on the Genesis Mini, which is the M2 Engage emulator. So go ahead and select it, highlight it, and then uh, right-click, and then go to Select Emulation Core. So down here, let's click the game. And then as you see, uh, M2 Engage is selected. We don't want that, so let's select Genesis Plus GX. Click apply, and then that is going to be done. It's going to set that to that game. So once we click it again in the information, you'll see the command line has changed 
to Genesis Plus GX. You may have to do that for some games that struggle with the, the made for emulator for the Genesis Mini. So that's just one thing I wanted to point out. Now, before we synchronize these games, we have one other thing to take a look at, and that's that structure button right there. This is important. So depending upon the option you select and how you set this up is gonna be how your games are displayed on the Genesis Mini. I believe the default is original games in root and then the automatic in subfolder. So that'll be all your add-on games, like in a whole other folder that's just for them. I don't want that. So I'm gonna disable pages and folders, but you do have a bunch of options here. Um, so there's that, disable pages and folders. All the games I'm adding, they're gonna intermingle with the games that are included on the system. So there's that. Let's go back to um, getting all the games shown. So original games, let's have all of them shown. So there's that, all the original games are selected. Our new games are selected. And then if we go to sort by, uh, we can go by core and then you'll see down here, uh, Ninja Turtles, Genesis Plus, GX, and then the rest of these games are all set to the built-in emulator, the M2 Engage. So now we're ready to sync. So let's click the synchronize button. This shouldn't take too long. It's only a handful of games we're adding. There's that. And boom, it's, it's done. So let's go ahead and plug this in, make sure everything worked and check it out. Let's do it. Okay, so here we go. Upon booting up our HackChi modded system, we're greeted to that little splash screen. I don't really like that. I don't know if there's a way to disable the splash screen. If somebody knows, let me know. But hey, as long as the games work and everything functions the way I expect it, I think I'm okay, right? So here we go. All my games are intermingling just the way I wanted it. If you would have left the structure to the default setting, there would be like a little icon at the bottom down here to switch to your add-on games. But let's quickly check a couple things out. So the interesting thing, we did install RetroArch. Specifically, I did just for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but you can boot any game in RetroArch. And the way you do that is just hitting start instead of the A button. Um, so you have that option. Any of the other games that are just set to the built-in emulator, you can, you can do it either way, built-in emulator or RetroArch. Now, since we set Hyperstone Heist specifically to RetroArch, it's just gonna load in that. So let's go ahead and hit A, load that up and test it out. Make sure it actually runs because the problem with this game was the built-in emulator. You would lose the sound once you got into the game. Um, so let's go ahead and see if that happens. And then the, the, there's another issue. Since we're using RetroArch and if you're using the, the standard three button controller, you're missing buttons to be able to use hotkeys. So it, it, there's kind of a, a, a little thing with that, and we'll, we'll touch on that in a quick second. Um, let's just make sure this game runs. So New York City, there we go. And we still got sound and audio, so that is a good thing. Definitely glad to see this game working. Wish it would have just worked with the built-in emulator, um, because I know some people, they don't want to mess with RetroArch, but for me, I, I really didn't want to either. But for this game, it was kind of like, man, kind of had to, right? So I'm going to pause the game now. We, it's like, how do you exit the game? If you hold the start button down, you're not going to get into the, the end game menu to exit or do anything. We're in RetroArch. So we have to hit reset on the system. Now we can change that though. So we can use the controller. Now the one caveat is, like I said, we only have a handful of buttons here. We don't have a select button. We don't have a mode button, all that stuff. Now, if you have a six button controller or third party controller that has additional buttons, you can set this up a little differently, but Okay, we hit reset, we're in here. Let's go to settings. Now, in order to, um, to change this, what we're gonna wanna do is actually, it's back at the top, go to inputs. And then down here is menu toggle gamepad combo. This is gonna be the best way to do it with this controller. Now, I think the default with this is set to down and select. We can't use that. So setting it to hold start for two seconds is pretty much the only way the other options that you have on here are just not going to work with this controller other controllers it may work but not with the uh the included one anyway and then if you do have another controller um that has additional buttons that you can use for you know enabling hotkeys and all that you can go ahead and set that down here and to hotkey binds you have quick uh quit retro art you just do it the same way set up a combination for that, enable hotkeys, all that good stuff. But like I said, with this controller, this is essentially the only way to do it right now is to set hold start for two seconds. So let's go ahead and get back into the game and I'll show you. We just hit start to unpause it, start fighting again. 
And then we'll go ahead and hold start for two seconds, a couple seconds, whatever. Brings up the quick menu. Doesn't quit RetroArch, that's the only thing. So from here, we're just gonna have to go ahead and go down to quit RetroArch and it will boot back into the system or the user uh, interface takes a second and bam, there we go. So working good, man. Um, like I said, you can boot any of these games into RetroArch if you choose by hitting start instead of the A button. Let's test out a, another game real quick before we go. Uh, why the hell not? Samurai Showdown. That's a good one. And these games that we added, we still do have access to holding the start button down or if you had a controller that has like, you know, a menu button that you can just quickly press and it just instantly opens this. That's what, man, so many people are disappointed getting this. They would have rather had a six button controller and I get it, but hey, there's a lot of cool options out there for controllers, but we do have access to the system menu, save and load states just fine. So that is some good stuff there, but there you go. Any other content you guys want me to do on Hackchi, let me know. Um, if you want to take a look at my Project Lunar video, I'll have a link in the description. Make, you know, to make up your mind, both hacks, you know, they work just fine. Um, it's just going to be up to personal preference. I like both of them. Um, they're both easy to use, very simple stuff here. Uh, but I think Hackchi, for some people who just want to add those games to the user interface, you know, and, and just boom, jump in play their games, not have too many frills going on, even though there's tons of options with Hackchi, but it is a simple solution to just throw some games on that front end and get going. This is a pretty damn good port for the, uh, the Sega Genesis here, man. But there you guys go. Really appreciate you guys hanging out with me um, for this little lengthy video. Hopefully I covered uh, most of the basics there to get you guys started on this. I'm really satisfied with you know, the results, I'm happy with it. Um, you know, there's options out there. So, hey, with that said, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye-bye, and boom, bye.